character is life. And we can liken that to the blood in the human body. It circulates to every part of the body and makes it function. Imagine polluted blood or contaminated blood, poison blood, going through your fingers or any part of your body. That organ ceases to function. Today, the live blood of our very existence, the soil, the trees, our ecosystem, fruits, vegetables, agriculture, every part is being poisoned in a quest to make money, to look for gold. Vast resources like these supporting our ecosystem is being poisoned by mining, irresponsible mining. In this documentary, we're going to look at our various sources of water, the pollution, the contaminants, levels of poisoning, and how that is affecting your life, your very existence. Meet Baby X, preserved in formalin at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology for observation. He or she is not your normal baby. Baby X is deformed. It has no genitals. It has six fingers and six toes and a malformed head. This baby was discovered by Professor Osei Sampini, a pathologist, scientist, and a senior lecturer with the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. The first case I've had was in the Western North, which is Bibiani to be precise. The mother was sent to the labor ward. She couldn't make it, so she died. And you see, whilst the person dies, usually the doctors will not go ahead to do cesarean section. The baby and the mother are sent to the morgue. And then another person comes in to remove the baby. This was after the autopsy to separate the baby from the mother who died before delivery. The baby or the fetus that was in the mother's womb was deformed. Deformed in the sense that the baby had multiple limbs. Um, including, I'm talking about upper and lower limbs. Uh, the eye was not well formed, fused together. Um, he had no sexes, that is, there was no identifiable sex. And generally, I mean, in medicine we call it dysmorphic, where you could not see anything that makes the baby, I mean, if he had been even born, would have lived comfortably in life. Professor Sampene traces the cause of the deformities to heavy concentrations of lead, mercury and cyanide found in the placenta. Well, mercury, cyanide, lead and arsenic, yes, in that, in that order. They were all there. They were all there. Of course, in some appreciable concentration that could be damaging to the, the normal function or the normal development of the DNA, the baby, and so on and so forth. Once it is in the placenta, naturally to be in the baby, because the placenta is the only means by which the baby gets his feet, even 
the, the, the oxygen the baby gets is from the placenta. Everything that the baby gets was in the, in, the, in the uterus is from the placenta. Baby X is perhaps the strongest proof ever of how heavy metal contamination can alter the developmental stages of a fetus, leading to extreme deformation in babies. I was surprised because medicine evolves. People have done studies in some of these things. So if you see them in the literatures, the books that you read, the biology books, the pathology books, the anatomy books, the histology books and all those things. Sometimes you see them, you feel it's, these are things that are just because, that they are just like toys or something that do not exist. People's, I mean, imaginations. But when I saw it, then I realized that yes, it's true. Baby X's preserved body is a grim presentation of an unseen danger lurking in the midst of communities affected by irresponsible mining and the selfish pollution of the Ghanaian environment for gold. Professor Sampini has so far seen and tested four of such babies with extreme deformities. He has similarly found disturbing levels of lead and mercury in all of them. I had a similar call to go and get another one done. That was in Central Region, Dunkwa Hospital. And the same thing was found. Then comes other cases in the Shanti Region, where another one was also I mean, found to be in a, in a similar manner. And then the Western Region, again, where another one was also found. Then I realized that there's, there should supposed to be some correlation here. And that correlation is what? The spillage of what? Any pollutant, any form of pollutant into the system, to the ecosystem, where we need to uh, actually address. Then I decided, look, let me just now get all the placentas labeled, parts of the babies, the, these fetuses, part organs like the kidney, the liver, these vital organs, let me just take bits and pieces of them and then do some work, laboratory work on, around it and see what could be the reason. He concludes that this is a grim reality of a possible widespread catastrophe which needs further public health research on a large scale. The conclusion is that heavy metals are in the system. When you read other literatures in Ghana, it's realized that we have realized that, oh, well, yeah, people have done some work in water bodies, um, soil, and probably the atmosphere. But let me just say that, not only that, now it is gone beyond that. And I told you, this work is not something that I can boldly say that it affects everybody. But those ones that I've done, only four fetuses that I've done, I believe, and I'm not I believe, I have seen that the heavy metals are there and they were, were found in them. And so that is why I, maybe in addition to other factors, other environmental factors or genetic factors or something, the stimulant or the stimuli could be just the, the, uh, the, the heavy metal. One way baby X's mother may have been exposed to mercury is through inhalation of vaporized mercury through the smelting of gold in Ghana's rural settings. This miner is mixing mercury with gold containing material. The mercury traps all the gold to form a silver-looking solid or mercury gold amalgam. He takes the amalgam to a gold dealer to sell. At Koniao, a small farming and mining community in the Bekwai municipality of the Ashanti region, Kofiasari works as a gold dealer. He represents the over 1,000 of such gold buyers who have pitched camps like these across the country, smelting, weighing and buying gold from mostly illegal miners. I buy the gold dust to many. So and by the gold dust too, there's a mercury inside. They use mercury to extract the gold. So 
you need to use fire or gas to heat it. He heats the gold mercury amalgam he gets from these artisanal miners with a blowtorch or sets them on fire to vaporize the mercury in obtaining the gold. The process produces a poisonous, white, foggy-looking vapor which fills the immediate environs. When you are burning it, it starts, the smoke starts coming out. So it can come out for that period. So I can, if the, if the substance is very big, I can use almost 30 seconds to burn it. So that 30 seconds, the smoke can stay for that 3 to 2 minutes. Yeah, it can stay. But if it is small, less than 5 seconds or to 10 seconds, I'm done with it. So that one, it doesn't stay for long. After eight years of doing this job, he suffered a major health blow about a month ago. I was at work. Uh, I saw that my industry, my hands was shaking. My body was shaking. I, I couldn't even stand my hands for some. You see, it's shivering, but that time it was very high. Okay. And I can't even hold pen to write. I can't even hold for hold water to drink. I was feeling very, very, very it was very, I was very hard, hard to do it. My intestines were the same. <laughs> it was really shaky. I feel I feel like something was inside my body. I can't take food. If I take food, I used to I used to vomit. <laughs> But Asari is not the only person exposed. He is silently poisoning the entire community. The mercury vapor eventually settles in the surrounding environments such as in the air, water, sediments and soil. You even see it, it's move out. So if you're having windows, it's move out. But if you're not having windows, it stays. I feel very sad. I feel, feel very, very sad. <laughs> but there's nothing that I can do. This vaporized mercury is highly toxic and is especially very toxic to pregnant women and their unborn children. Professor Sampini explains why. Infants, children, and even, um, uh, let's say, embryos, things that have been developed within the mother after conception when the mother is now the baby is now being formed these are places or these are areas that are able to absorb most of these things either by inhalation the mother will inhale it goes through the blood and then the child gets it through the placenta it comes in so much so that if it is so much that the baby can even bear then the child the mother may have to abort the baby because the baby cannot continue to grow in such an environment. So it becomes so poisonous and it becomes poisonous to the mother. So the mother will have to abort it. But if for some reason the baby is able to grow with it and, and be delivered, then it comes to what we call congenital anomalies of various forms. Some of which having the child having multiple limbs, limb growing from the chest, limbs going from the eye, what do you call it, the, the, the shoulders, the pelvis, the back, limbs even growing from the abdomen and also, and, and then sometimes you may have conditions where the, the stomach wall is not formed by skin, it's, you see something trans, translucent, very plain thing that you can see the child's intestines, the liver, everything. In Ghana, these gold smelting centers are scattered across the rural terrain in Galamse prone communities. However, the mercury they burn daily is a neurotoxin that persists in the ecosystem and bioaccumulates in the food chain. Mercury in air, it is one huge challenge that we are being faced with. Dr. Eugene Ansan is a scientist in charge of the Sheath Laboratory of the Chemistry Department at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He has been using okay. a mercury air analyzer to test for mercury air concentration in communities where gold smelting is done. What we saw was that 
most people were exposed indirectly to mercury vapor farther away from the point source that is the point of application or the point of amalgamation and roasting we check the levels at the lower floor at the nose level and at the upper floor and i estimated the health risk associated with it and all of them we saw that as far as you living in that room is concerned you are exposed and there is a greater danger associated with it mercury exposure has got a lot of health effects for pregnant women it will affect you it will affect the baby that is developing within you you can get bone cancer or leukemia from this fetal deformities are all things that you would have but not all of these poisonous elements are introduced by the miners many of them are naturally occurring elements god who is all knowing and knew what he was giving to mankind decided to keep certain minerals at a depth where humans will not have interactions with because they contain some potential harmful elements. This Professor Emmanuel Ahin is the dean of the School of Geoscience and dean in charge of the Doma campus of the University of Energy and Natural Resources. He is an applied geologist and council member of the International Medical Geology Association. He has done a lot of work on heavy metal contamination in now, Ghana. Through the operation of this mining district, they bring these minerals to the surface. And then when they come up there, they become unstable because at that depth there, they exist in high temperature environment. So when you bring it up there, you have brought them to an environment where the temperature and the pressure are not con for them to stay there as the original mineral so they get transformed they form secondary minerals and as they form these secondary minerals they are mobilized into our water bodies into the groundwater and that is where we get exposed to them we sought to find more answers. Deep inside the greens of Chifu Kotoche and Chifu Etimokwa Old Town in the Chifu Etimokwa district of the central region, excavators are digging deep into the earth's crust. Uncontrolled mining brings up toxic substances invisible to the naked eye. Naturally occurring elements like lead, mercury, cadmium, arsenic, and chromium occur naturally in the earth's crust but can be released into the environment through uncontrolled mining. Heavy metals can enter the body through inhalation, ingestion, or skin contact. Professor Ahin notes the danger of the current uncontrolled irresponsible mining across the country that water that is so dirty everybody knows that it's dirty so drinking it will be a challenge the forests that are being cut in now being degraded when you get there and the forest is degraded you see you see the impact the consequence that will come later but i'm so much interested in things that the effects will come many years to come not immediately and that is the ecosystem contamination. A perfect example is an illegal miner we found along the river Pra at Chifu Kotochi in the Chifu Etimokwa district. He told us off camera that he has no license for the mining activity along the Pra. But he is seen directing his mining residue into the Pra River at Chifu Kotochi and a second site at Chifu Etimokwa Old Town. 
along the Tano River, similar dangerous types of mining are happening. These Chinese miners are seen deliberately digging and washing mining residue into the Tano River at Boya, Bena and Samreboy. This type of uncontrolled mining introduces naturally occurring poisonous heavy metals into water bodies like the Pra. The Environmental Protection Agency, in its research conducted on fishes in the Tano River in 2022, revealed alarming levels of mercury. EPA, we are also into research. Dr. Jackson Edia Nyantechi is the half original director of the Environmental Protection Agency. He spoke at a transformational dialogue on small scale mining organized by the University of Energy and Natural Resources, Sunyani. In face samples that were taken from River Tano at the Dantano area there, I thought I was just doing something simple. But when I realized the levels of mercury in the face samples, I became so alarmed. I looked at the levels in muscle, the face muscles, the head, the uh, gills, the eye, and the, the bones. The highest concentration was in the gills. The bones were also there. So since then, I have stopped eating the head of the fish as well as the bones. I only eat the muscles and that is it. Pollutants from irresponsible or uncontrolled mining have the potential to accumulate in the human body over time, leading to a range of health problems. The extent of their toxicity depends on factors such as the specific metal, its concentration, the duration of exposure, and an individual's susceptibility. Bonsu has engaged in illegal mining for more than two years. He is currently not well. He has been having anxiety, palpitations, and doctors say his blood Hg levels are approximately three times upper limit of normal. There are some of them who fortunately get to the hospital and we are able to intervene. Dr. Yusuf Tijani is a medical doctor with the Samatex Hospital in Samreboy. He tells me his years of practice in the Galamse prone area has exposed him to diagnosis of ailments that only point to exposure to toxins from irresponsible mining. You find a gentleman walk into your consulting room, complains of headache, tiredness, um, can't sleep at night, heart is racing, you know, uh, headache headaches that you know you've done all labs and the not usual labs and they, they seem to be okay their mm -hmm. blood count is okay their malaria test is fine their urine is okay they are, you know everything seems to be okay mm -hmm. and then when you go to their uh, occupational history they say they are they, they are engaged in galamsey and then when you check their mercury levels it's in the roofs for example, we are tending to see a lot of chronic kidney diseases in very young people, age 20, 25, 30, you know. And this didn't used to be the case. We've been running our hypertension and diabetes clinic for a very long time. And we know that there's a, a certain link between cyanide and, and the incidence of hy uh, hypertension and, and, and hence chronic kidney failure and a lot of these people are in these these areas where the galaxy is, is is you know very rampant yes mm -hmm. so yes kidney disease and and i even suspect that liver disease because we are tending to see a lot of also uh, chronic kidney uh, liver disease in our young people population one of his patients is bonsu this is 25 year old who is complaining, same thing, headache, time, dog. And I wake up in the morning, now I have stopped work because of that. Because there's really no energy. I wake up, I can't sleep in the night. My heart is racing, you know. It's as if I have, you know, I've been cursed. You know, that's so to speak, that's what they described it. And then there was also a link in taking, during the history taking, a link that he has been, you 
they engaged in galamsey and in fact he told me that when they burn sometimes they use nose masks but they themselves knew that it is not protective enough after a series of toxicological tests it was found that bones's blood has astronomical levels of mercury 100 micrograms per liter about five times the accepted threshold bonsu and others who have these high concentrations of mercury can only manage their symptoms after agreeing to an interview and sharing his initial thoughts with us bonsu later declined a full interview about 12 miles from samraboy we hit asankregua a town sprawling with the effects of irresponsible mining. It is also the capital of Amemfi West Municipal in the western region of Ghana. Here, a baby is born to a couple in one of the surrounding villages. Doctors and health workers at the Father Thomas Alaruni Memorial Catholic Hospital at Asankregua are surprised at the features of the baby. The baby has one leg, no genitals, and no anus. Though there was no established cause of the baby's deformities, health authorities had one major suspicion. Dr. Richard Ankama is the senior medical officer who performed the delivery of the baby. The latest scandal the woman brought showed that the water around the baby was very scanty. And so we had to quickly do CS for the woman on account of uh, severe oligoadrenaline. Surprisingly, <laughs> the baby uh, had only um, one lower limb, uh, one lower limb, one lower limb with, um, with no sex. What I mean is no genitalia. So we can't say whether it's a male or it's a female no inos and in fact everybody was was surprised but unfortunately few uh, hours after delivery the baby passed the baby's parents were quick to leave it due to stigma and had no interest in further investigations into the cause of the deformities he thought that we had delivered mommy water baby father of the baby was not interested in our request to help him probe further in finding the cause and possible remedies. In a developing country with limited health resources and low literacy rates, the mother of this baby may never know the source of her baby's predicament in an environment whose air is constantly polluted by poisonous substances. <laughs> 